We're back to talk of the ego and the skandhas. The notion of an ego, of a, an ego soul, a jiva, was essentially supplanted by the teaching of the skandhas. But the jiva seems to be a difficult notion to let go of. And I suspect there was probably a lot of debate to what extent the skandhas were a substitute for the jiva or was the jiva somehow implied by the skandhas? The answer to that is no. What we're interested in though, is this of any use to us? Is it of any use to us as enlightenment practitioners? So let's have a look. Verse 837. It is certainly their mistake to think that the ego is perceivable along with the skandhas by reason of oneness and otherness. The theorizers are not enlightened. And I'll do verse 830 here as well because it punctuates the previous verse somewhat. So verse 838, as an image is seen in a mirror, in water or in an eye, so is the soul in the skandhas, devoid of oneness and otherness. So it may seem a little bit technical, a little bit irrelevant, this teaching of the skandhas. But it is actually a practice. I remember when I first heard about the skandhas, when I was first taught about them, the word skandha was translated as heap, heap. The five skandhas are five heaps. This didn't seem to make much sense to me because it's quite a dynamic thing going on. There's more to it than just five heaps. The word heap seems to denote something quite inert and passive. And I probably had a point but the thing is, this teaching of the skandhas is supposed to lead to liberation. And it does this by dissolving clinging. As the previous verse said, if there is an ego, then it's clinging. And some people might be clinging to this particular idea of an ego soul. We don't want to cling to the idea of the skandhas either. What we need to be doing is observing them. And I think this is the point of the translation heap. We just simply observe the skandhas in operation. We actually observe what's going on. I don't know about you, I can't speak for you, but I find at any point if I observe what, what is going on, then I observe a limiting mood. Unless I'm successfully practicing, but let's assume we're just caught up in the everyday here which is actually the truth most of the time. There's a mood going on. This is the mental formations. This is the samskara. And this mood isn't simply something to do with me, at least from the point of view of the mood. It reflects the state of my situation it reflects my perceived understanding of the state of the world, of the state of reality. And this is consciousness. Consciousness is what we take to be real. And this is bound up by a dynamic feedback loop of feelings 
and perceptions. So, the moods or samskaras and consciousness, these are two of the skandhas, and they're reinforced by moods and perceptions. And they're reinforced by feelings and perceptions. Because this mood I'm in is to do with a certain feeling I have. A certain feeling, perhaps, relating to the body. And it determines the sorts of things which I'm inclined to look at. So feelings and perceptions are, are two of the other skandhas, are two of the remaining skandhas. And this determines the movement of the attention, what the attention dwells on. And what the attention dwells on reinforces the feelings and perceptions and the basic mood, the basic samskara, which in turn reinforces my particular take on reality. So this is the five skandhas in operation. As we observe this, it's quite good just to point this out to ourselves. We see these five heaps and we can say, well, this is a feeling. I can put it on the feeling heap. I'm actually taking this as reality, as fixed reality. This is what I believe is real at the moment. That's the consciousness heap. What sort of feelings am I having right now? Are they pleasant, unpleasant? What am I feeding these feelings with? What are the perceptions? I can mark these heaps as well. And when it comes right back to it, what is the attention dwelling on right now? This is the form heap, the rupa heap. What is my attention being led to at any particular moment? This is the form. So we can put that on a heap. We can actually start working on this and say, well, perhaps if my if I put my attention some, on something else, not just on where it's inclined to direct itself, then I can change the pattern. It's a question about doing something which removes you from a particularly limiting situation. So you can work on your whole psychology here. But spiritually, we want to do more than that. We come back to the awareness. But before I go into that, let's just look at these verses. It's certainly a mistake to think that the ego is perceivable along with the skandhas. So we're not getting into looking for the ego. We can get into some idea of self-improvement through this, working on ourselves. And this could be what's meant by oneness and otherness. We don't feel we're a very good person. So we're looking to change, to be like somebody else perhaps, oneness and otherness. So we can look at it this way, we can see it in terms of personal development. We can be careful about what we allow our mind to dwell on, what we allow our senses to dwell on. We can guard the door of the senses and this is fine. But this doesn't lead us to enlightenment. The next verse gives us a bit of a clue. As an image is seen in a mirror, in water or in an eye, in other words, in any kind of reflecting surface, so is the soul in the skandhas devoid of oneness and otherness. We come back to what is actually identifying the skandhas because this is the reality. This is consciousness itself, rather than the objects of consciousness. Consciousness is what is looking in the mirror. A 
and what it sees is a projection and it gets caught up in this projection but that projection is not real the skandhas are not real their nature is emptiness they're like dream substances So we need to take this next step. If we're interested in simply working on ourselves, becoming better people, then that's one thing. But as enlightenment practitioners, although we don't eschew that possibility of becoming better, we have to work at lots of different levels. But we can step back from it all. We come back to the awareness, which is doing the analyzing. The, the awareness that is observing this is not part of the skandhas it's also not the ego soul because there's no individual quality to it so in this way we can be liberated or at least consciousness can become liberated by realizing the nature of the skandhas.